What up? This is Dan from Ice Nine Kills, and I just wanted to give a shout out to the loudest podcast in all of music, The Mosh Cast, where they review albums, EPs from any and all genres. They even interview new and upcoming bands. It's a freaking great time. Keep moshing, motherfuckers. Girls. Welcome to the Moshcast, and today we are going to do, we saw again Thursday we did Top 10 Bear Two, but today you see it again Mr. Purnell's shirt, we're going to do Top 10 Slipknot songs, and again I'm here with four minus one amazing person that is here today, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we did this one. All right, so starting off first, again, I'm going to get this person out of the way. You see him a lot of times. You see him do dumb shit, as always, and pretty much be a horny bastard like he usually is. Ladies and gentlemen, it's AJ. Oh, what? my God. Did somebody listen to Shinedown today? <laughs> oh, God, I'm I, can, I, I can read all of the Please quotes don't. AJ says. Please no. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the loudest podcast of all fucking music, the Mosh fucking cast, where no. we are. Are, are you not scrolling around? Okay. We are oh, doing no. top <laughs> ten shit not songs. In my opinion, one of my favorites of all time. Let's get this shit started. I thought you have a bad voice. What happened to it? I it's mean, it's bad getting voice. better. So. Okay. Okay. Shut up, Jason. Okay. You're next. Just fucking go. Oh, well, yeah, I'm never here anyways. I'm, I'm actually making my first appearance today. This is Justin Bailey. Just. <laughs> yeah, the person you've been seeing this entire time was a clone. Jason well, Bailey. on the lies again, apparently. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm, I'm new here. It's Jace N. Bailey. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm honored to be the first time ever. All Thank right. you, Lucas, for giving me a welcome here. I'm honored to be here going forward. Fucking God. I hate yeah, you. and Julie knows to add me yeah. to the roster photo. He's not even full time. I know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Thumbnails. He's like Brock Lesnar. He takes part time. Anyways. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, he's, he's the universal champion. Okay. <laughs> Julian. Okay. All right, hold on. Jewel. <laughs> Well, I guess I guess I guess he's gonna go last. Um, no, he's going next. Julian, get your ass over here. <laughs> it's John Cena. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. So next up again, I said four. You see him again do IGTV. You see him do this podcast again. This is basically the legend, and basically our king of the Moshcast. And ladies, ladies and gentlemen, it's Julian. Calling me old. I mean, I'm no. older than all of you. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's old. Yeah, Matt, Maddie, you are older than all of us, but you are shorter than all of us. So, I uh, will <laughs> kick your ass. I may be short, but uh, I can kick your ass. Well, or, you can probably or, or slap my shin, my shin or my knee or I don't think you. you never mind. Hi, A super kick to Julian. Hello, every. <laughs> She's like, why well, I oughta. Hey everyone, my name is Joy Purnell, the Heavy Metal Joker. Welcome back to the loudest podcast in all of music, <sighs> the Moshcast. Um, so yeah, I'm here. I'm I'm here to uh, do all the list videos. I'm not coming back on for the album reviews unless there's one I really want to talk about. But I'm basically okay, doing this just pick. because. What'd you say? I said, AKA your birthday pick, which is "Homesick" by a day to remember. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. I might replace that for a list, but anyway, I'm joking. I won't replace it. But anyway, I am back for the Moshcast list videos. I'm not coming back full time. That's I discussed that in the last video. And um, but yeah, I'm back here mainly because I'm just bored out of my fucking mind, and I need something to do. And thankfully, these guys know how to keep me company, and they keep me from losing my sanity like I've been doing this past year. How about, how about we do a mosh test every day now? Jason, Jason. I would rather cry. I'd rather die. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. This is, this is my introduction, not yours. Um, so, uh, the last but certainly not least, you see them on the podcast for the last couple months, and basically this is basically the elements and basically fan love even before me. But, um, yes. It's a 
Steve Harkin Hellfire shirt. So all the people, please welcome Patty. Hello. What Who? the fuck is up, Kyle? I will wreck you. Who is Kyle and why you. are you wrecking him? <laughs> Your name is Kyle and I'm going to fuck you up. Anyways. Kyle O'Reilly. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Shock the ignoring you now, um, <laughs> yes, it is I, the Eddie Baby. Hudson lover, if you can't tell, Hellfire hey. Club shirt, got the guitar pick necklace I made and the little Funko Pop. I also oh, bought the uh, action figure, yes. Uh, I'm really excited to do this list. Um, if you've seen my TikTok, you already know what my list is. Um, what is that? Oh, it's Metallica. Cliff Burton. Um, yeah. Uh, we do actually have um, a special Eddie episode coming up, and I will announce that at the end of the uh, episode to kind of describe what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to uh, list off Slipknot songs and talk with everybody about it. Um, again, if you've seen my TikTok, you already know my list. It hasn't changed. It probably won't change for a while, so let's get into it. All right, so let's go with off with Ed and if you get our mentions, you can name your honorable mentions as well. So I'm gonna go last for this one for all of these. I'm, oh, gonna, go, I, I'm gonna keep mine in order like 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 this time. So uh what's number one? Let's go with Jason first. What's your what's your number ten? Number ten, um I'm gonna go with um three nil. Ooh from, from volume three, um, that's one of the first Slipknot songs I've heard, and that got me into the band. Mm. Okay, you wearing? Oh, oh, I, I, what oh, in I the was Jesus Christ was that? <laughs> are are what? you part of the uh, band? What the? Oh, hell? wow, you you look like yeah, you look like that <laughs> Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> I love Nick Cage. You, I'm gonna say it's Ghost Rider, y'all. I, I thought you were gonna say Nick no, Cage. That, that's, I'm talking about the shitty Ghost Rider. Yeah, movie. That, that's that's AJ. He's um he's Ghost Rider's uh, twin Ghost Rider. brother. He, he's, ah! he's Nick Gage, not Nick Cage. Nick Gage. Oh, oh MDK. <laughs> Nick Gage. <laughs> oh, oh, you're talking about the wrestler. Yeah, the death match. That's a wrestler's name, Nick Gage. Oh yeah, I've seen him on AEW. I, I know him. Okay. okay. I love you, motherfuckers. AJ, relax. Relax. All right. Come. Let's keep going. Stop. I said stop. Mm -hmm. All right. AJ, what's your number 10? All right. Oh, God. I see it. Uh. Um, okay. Number 10 is actually going to be a surprising one. No, no. Spit. It out. Not a surprising one. No. no. I love this song. Like, probably one of my favorites of that album. That first album, man. It's, it's incredible, you know? It's a great way to, like... I don't know. Like, get, like that chorus, like, especially the chorus. Like, spit it out. Like, oh, he's going to be, like, just sing that. Like, oh, my God. This song is incredible and will be one of my favorites from that album. All right, yeah, you can go and be a shitty ghost writer. Um, so, um, Julian, what's your number 10? <coughs> my number 10 is uh, did da 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 Yes, I love that song. You guys know, everyone knows my love for Point Five, The Great Chapter. It's one of my favorite Slipknot albums. Um, just that song is such a good crowd pleaser. Like every single time they play that song, the crowd goes absolutely ape shit. And yes, it may not lyrically may not make sense, but that's been Slipknot the whole. That's just Slipknot. But actually, I can't say that Slipknot because they have some serious songs as well. But like this is definitely one of those songs where they could just like have fun and just go ape shit. And that's exactly what the song was. They just went absolute ape shit and they just had had a blast making it. And it sounds fucking awesome. Like 
And plus, it's the one of the most used metal songs on TikTok, aside from Master of Puppets. Thanks a lot, Eddie. But <laughs> not, 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 not in a bad way. Not in a bad way. My beloved. Bad way. <laughs> so, my loving, how you doing? All right. So, but yeah, Custer is my number 10. All right. Matt T, what's your number 10? My Matt number 10 T. is Kill Pop. I oh. absolutely love this song so much. I think it's ca- kind of like it doesn't get the love. Like people know it, sure, but I feel like it doesn't get the love that it deserves when it comes to this I, album. Yeah. Personally, I don't see people really like talking about it. Again, I'm not saying like it's underrated because again, people know this song. They do. It's just you know one yeah, of those yeah. songs that a lot of people don't really talk about. Um, I I absolutely love the music video to it is is a trip. It's a mind fuck, but that's a lot of slip. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's just one of those songs that kind of like just soothes your brain. I say that a lot when it comes to songs that I can't really like pinpoint what it is about it. But this is one of those songs where it's, it's just so good. It, like you you just can't get it off of it. It really is that good. Mm-hmm. All right, my number 10, I do have some bitches and write down, unfortunately, because, again, I was super in the rush. So, for uh, honor mentions, I have Leo Fort, Leo Forte, Negative One, and Vermilion, both of them. Number 10 is I'm Hated. Oh. Okay. Hell yeah. So, um, I think that's off Iowa, if I'm not mistaken. And... Uh, and I, when I listen to the song, like, and the lyrics just, just speak it out, just like um, Hated by Bear Tooth, this one, again, like, just speaks out to me, in my personal opinion, because, again, like, you get hated because, again, you're, you're, you're basically being yourself, whatever, and you, you know that, and you, they're trying to make you portray a villain. So it's kind of like the old saying, a villain in your story, hero in my story. And I personally love the song. So let's go to number nine. Jason. Okay, number nine. That'll have to go to insert coin. Oh, really? That's interesting. That's interesting. Did I expect that? I like that a lot. That's another favorite song from Slipknot because that's one of the first ones that I've, I've listened to. Insert coin. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> what? How? How Why are you, gonna... you inserting it? You know what? I don't want to know. Just fucking uh, move on, AJ. Please go. Yes. Hey, all right, what's your number nine? All right, number nine is Custer. Custer. It's, it's Custer. Man, this song, unbelievable. Great song. I enjoyed it. Okay, we're not. Definitely but, a great song, man. I recommend uh, listening uh, to this song. Uh, 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 I love Charlie okay. Brown. Dylan. <laughs> what did you just say, Maddie? Mm-hmm. I said yeah. I love Charlie Brown. Because <laughs> you were doing the thing. That's how the parents sound when they don't talk. Don't know why that just... Yeah. Uh, no worries, but okay. Yeah. Anywho, my... Uh, Number nine pick is Disaster Piece. Oh, Ooh. oh my God. Jesus. Uh, this is what we're going to do now. Jesus Christ, my ears. Okay. So, Disaster Piece is probably one of my favorite, one one of my favorite songs off of uh, Ayla. Uh, I always hand down like one of my favorite records in all time. Like, there's no doubt about that. It just. Just the way that that song just comes in, just immediately after the Heretic Anthem. I think I think it's after the Heretic Anthem. I'm forgetting the song listing. Um, I'll just look it up right here. I love here we go. Oh yeah, it, right after People Equal Shit, I should say. I just the fact that it immediately just like right after People Equal Shit, it just immediately just starts. It's just like oh shit, this is about to go down, and I lost my mind when we reviewed it. Um, oh, that's uh, mine when Eagle Shit comes on. Yeah, well, because here's the thing, like, people don't know, that was the episode where I officially announced my absolute despise for a certain 
singer of a certain band that we do not talk about that starts with oh. the name. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I, I just gagged a little. <laughs> I'm sure he's done that a while, too. Um, so, oh, ow. I'm not, I'm not going to make the joke, but, but yeah, just that song was like my first like time really just like just saying like, okay, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck anymore. I'm going to say how I fucking feel about a, that certain someone. And uh, yeah, that's all I really got to say. That song just has a special place in my heart for that, for that specific reason about how much I hate double R. Oh, we all do. Sounds like a disease. He, oh, technically, he kind of is. He is a disease, yeah. He's a disease to TikTok he's a, and Twitch. What? He's a disease to TikTok and he's Twitch. He's a disease to society. And he's he's and in service, let's move on. Yeah, let's just move on before he gets zombified. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me. Um, uh, Maddie, number nine. Not My so. number nine, fuck you, <laughs> is sulfur. Sulfur I love, fuck off. I love no. this song so much. It's not one of my favorite Slipknot albums, um, but they do have some hidden gems on there, and I feel like sulfur is definitely like one of them. Um, the video is fucking phenomenal. Again, it's one of those trippy ones. That seems to be a pattern with me and, and Slipknot in their videos and their songs. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is about this song, but it's just... Uh, it's just so good. Everything about it, you know, to the chorus, it's so catchy. And Corey's vocals on it, I mean, yeah. phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So that's my number nine pick. All right, so my number nine comes off from Iowa once again. Because again, why not? Number nine for me is My Plague. And, oh. and for me, this is one of my personal favorites off this album. I like how when Corey is like, you know, screaming, but also like balance out with clean vocals. I think personally for me, it's one of his best clean vocals of that album, my personal opinion. Off that album, one hundred percent, I can agree. I can definitely agree with that. And I really just do like just uh, it's some reason that chorus to me always been very soothing. I don't know, it's just been I don't know that just me, but it's just been soothing. That's it for me is because every time I hear it, I get focused, and that's the best thing about this this um song is gets me focused every single time, and I fucking love it. All right, so going to number eight, going to ultra. I think it's ultra. Um. Jason. Doing number eight now, I see. Okay. <laughs> That'll be Opium of the People. That's, oh. one of the, that's one of the first songs I've heard from, what's that one? Um, has been Falling Three? Falling Three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's one of the first songs I've heard, and that got me hooked onto the, onto the rest of the album. Yes. Uh, you, you're doing what makes you break an album. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Beginning of the one, make a way for it. I'm gonna give y'all a hit. You're gonna see my number one. It's gonna be that too. Um, oh yeah, same. So, uh, AJ, what's your number eight? Okay, my number eight is the devil and I. Really? The devil and I. Yeah. Yeah. I wish. <clears throat> I wish I could put this song. And so high, but there was so. It's your list, AJ. Your list. There was literally so many songs from Slipknot I actually love, but it was so hard to do. But this was a very hard to do. I'll give you that. But it is uh, hard for me as well. That might deserve to be a little bit higher, but the devil and I will will absolutely be my childhood. Like this is pretty much my childhood song. Like, when I was a young kid, like, I just listened to this song so many fucking times that I just want to listen to it again because it's so good. And it was based on the album where they were dedicating to to the, the late bassist at the time, Paul Gray. Paul Gray. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Rest in peace, man. Baby, rest in, rest in peace. And Joey. And Joey, and yeah. 
Joey. Yeah, and Joey left the band at the time as well. But rest in peace, Joey Jordanson as well. Um, but me. yeah, The Devil and I will always, always be a great song. Especially the chorus as well. That's fucking amazing. What's crazy is that, what? wait, what year did All Hope Is Gone come out? 2008? Right. All yeah. Hope Is Gone 2008, yeah. Paul then died in 2010. 2010? 2010, yeah. What's crazy about that is that right after Paul died in 2010, they didn't do any shows <laughs> until 2015. Yeah. Five, the well, they, they did some stuff because they had, I think, a previous bassist um, who played backstage. They just didn't release any music because, um, obviously, with Paul dying... But they, they did. Walk. They did a couple of shows, from what I remember, and then they had that um, thing that had his jumpsuit, and you they saw did, Joey hugging it. Yeah, they did like yeah. five. They did five festival performances in 2013. But that's because Stone Sour was playing all of those festivals as well, because they were doing their House of Golden Bones series. <laughs> it's definitely. It definitely wouldn't have been 2013 because Joey wasn't in the band at that point. And when they when they did those shows, was it twenty twelve? It it might have it was definitely after he died. I don't remember when, but Joey was definitely in the band. This was when he was like oh. like thin, like he was still really little. Um, I'll to go minute. back because I remember Slipknot did do Download Festival one of the years. I know they did Rock and Ring as well. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, yeah. they did like a like did they did like four festival shows? I think. I think it was 2000. I'm gonna guess 2011, maybe 2011 or 2012, because I know Joey left in 2013, late 2012. No, yeah. it was 2013 when he yeah. left. 2013. That's right. Oh, oh, yeah, 2013. But they did. Either way, they played shows after Paul died. It just wasn't like a lot of them. Um, yeah, they did like I think they only did like eight or nine performances total. Yeah, they did a few of them. I think they did like three shows a year after. Yeah. After he passed. Because they weren't releasing any music. And yeah. Stone Sour, that's when, you know. That's when Corey started going hardcore on Stone Sour. Yeah. Which recipe uh, for that as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want Stone Sour back so bad. I don't I want I think they'll that come food. back. I think they'll come back eventually. Just think of the CMFT, CM, CMFT bullshit. Like, I, I didn't like that last album. I, looking back, it does not have any replay value. It doesn't. Yeah, I've heard that from a lot of people. <laughs> Uh, anyway, what's your number eight, Julian? Oh, my number. Oh, you want to know my number eight? Oh, my number eight uh, goes by the name Kill Pop. Oh. <laughs> okay, yours is higher than mine. That's right, because I have, I love that song so fucking much, mainly because of the meaning behind it. It's basically going after reality TV show stars. <laughs> Uh, and also just going after the public's perception of what is a celebrity nowadays. Mm-hmm. That's all Kill Pop is. Like they could have they made so many. Like if you watch the music video, yes, it's creepy as hell. But like you'll get like certain at, like aspects of the video where like okay, they're clearly talking about the Kardashians in this part, or oh, they're clearly talking about the U- the YouTuber or Viners in this one. Like, which no offense to Vine, I love Vine, but. Uh, but like I get where they're coming from. It's just like it, they're basically talking about like, okay, it doesn't take anything to get famous anymore. It really doesn't. It's like his shirt. Stop making stupid people famous. Exact. Oh, I need to get that shirt. Mm-hmm. I need to get a shirt that says "Stop, stop making John Cooper famous." Anyway, I need so, to get one for the double R. Uh, we. I'm sure there's already a bunch of those out there. Mm-hmm. I'll have to hit. I'll have to hit up someone. But anyway. Yeah, Kill Pop, I just love the meaning behind that song, especially at the time when I was first getting into Slipknot, I related to that song. Um, obviously, nowadays, I listen to a lot more music, and I appreciate a lot more music. I am still picky when it comes to pop. Uh, that's, that hasn't changed. That I'm very picky. Like I don't like the super like bubblegum radio, like, <laughs> let's just get on the radio pop music. Like That's why I like people like, you know, Dua Lipa and Miley Cyrus. Olivia Rodrigo. Olivia Rodrigo, yes. Because they actually put the work in and do something unique and different. And their songwriting is great. Like, they write some good songs. And they write it themselves. 
Mm-hmm. A lot of these pop artists have 15 people writing them. Like Dua Lipa writes all of her songs by herself. Um, Miley Cyrus used to have a group of people helping her out when she was on like the Disney yeah, stuff. Yeah. But then like right when she started doing like the more rock and roll stuff, she started writing it all on her own. Same, same with Olivia. Writes all her own songs. I don't know if Lady Gaga writes her own music. I heard rumors that she. I think yes and no. It depends. I think yeah, it really just does depend. But yeah, it all depends on the pop artist. Like I know po- Posty. I mean, Posty's not really pop. He's not really rap. I, I, you can't place a genre under Posty, but he writes his own stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's helped me. Like this song kind of helped me find a new respect for certain pop artists that do put the work in and do work their asses off, instead of having a computer doing the work for them. Which is what a lot of pop artists in the twenty in most of the twenty tens did, but thankfully I think artists like like Dua Lipa and like Daft Punk, like when they came back with like Pharrell Williams and did that that whole album, that kind of put a different perspective on how pop music can be made. It's like you can have instruments. It doesn't have to be super electro pop. It doesn't have to be super formulaic it doesn't have to be generic it, you can add so many different elements like that's done that with rock like a bunch of like we have a lot of pop rock nowadays which is a cool thing because like now a lot of the pop fans can get into rock and then maybe later on discover metal like like or the other way around too or the other way around like exactly like i know we've made fun of mgk but the way here's the thing mgk the way he did it he did it wrong he did yeah. it he did it like he tried to get all, all the pop punk kids, like all the mainstream kids into pop punk and rock, but he did it the wrong way. People like Miley Cyrus are doing it the right way. How Demi Lovato, she's doing it the right way as well. Like she's like with her recent stuff and like Post Malone's doing it the right way. Dua Lipa is doing it the right way. Like they're like they're all trying to get these people. Olivia Rodrigo is doing it the right way. She's a big pop punk fan as well. She's a huge Paramore fan. So yeah, it really all is just kill pop. Just it helps me find a new perspective on music as well and how music is consumed and how different, how like I, I have a lot of respect for anyone that writes their own music. Cause like a lot of rappers have hundreds of people helping them out. Nowadays, a lot of country artists have a lot of people helping them out, which I despise country music with a passion. With the exception of Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash is the only exception to that because he actually had heart in his music. Same with Will. You know, Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson. Those are the only two country artists I respect. Johnny Cash got people into Nine Inch Nails, too. You got to remember that as well. Yeah, Johnny and Johnny Cash loved heavy metal. He loved the idea of heavy metal. He was a huge Mm -hmm. supporter of heavy metal. Same with Willie. Willie was a huge supporter of, of heavy metal in the 90s. Like, he never, like, made heavy metal music but he talked about it and he the way he dressed sometimes he'd be wearing like you know the patchy like jean coats or whatever the fuck they were were like (laughs) this sorry i had to bring that up but yes like that's exactly right like he had like all these different artists had so much respect like dolly parton respects the hell out of hard rock and heavy metal like she went on record to say how much she like respects ACDC. When she was talking about her Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction, she thinks other rock bands deserve it more than she does. Which you're saying, no doubt about it. Dolly Parton deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. No doubt about it. Her contribution to the music scene is unlike any other. But like she even said, like me going into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is like ACDC or Rage Against the Machine going into the Country Music Hall of Fame. She's she also the other exception when it comes to country music. Yeah, uh, yeah, I should say that too. Like Do- Dolly, Johnny, Willie, everyone, everyone else has had like hundreds of people writing for them. They're doing whatever's trendy, the bro pop country bullshit that's plaguing the radio stations and grocery stores all over the country. It's just a shame. But yeah, Slipknot kind of helped me figure out like it's okay to like other genres, it, but also definitely give <clears throat> like credit to the people that do the work themselves better where it's due yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's why kill pop is my number eight i'm sorry i went on a long tangent but that's just how i am hey that's yeah. that's what we do yeah. here that's all good matt d. matt d my number eight is left behind hey. Iowa. I-, I absolutely oh. love this song this is probably 
the second song I've heard by Slipknot. Um, or third. I think it was a third, because it was definitely, like, the second music video I've seen by them when I was a kid. Um, and for some reason, it just kind of reminded me of, like, Halloween for some reason. Yes. I don't, I don't know why, but it just it just did, like, the creepy feeling you would get from the movie. And that's why I really loved Slipknot. Like, like I said, that was probably, like, the third song I heard by them when I was a kid. But, like, I immediately, like, really drew to them because of another certain music video that will be meant <laughs> higher, like, later on. <laughs> um, because this is very high up on my list. Um, but I just, I loved the concept of the video. And I just loved that album i like iowa and self-titled are like tied for my favorite slipknot albums because they're both just so fucking good um and this song is no exception to that but the music video that that's definitely what it is for me is like music videos really draw me in because i like visual effects and things like that so like if i can't really tell what a story is with a song sometimes it'll be shown in a music video um but that's just another reason why I like them. And sometimes they're just really fucking cool and make the song even cooler than they already are, which is basically what it was in this case. Um, so, really enjoy the song a lot. All right. So, my number eight comes off, I think it's kind of all hope is gone. And this is snuff. Is number- this isn't even on my list. Oh, <laughs> shit. Okay. Again, you, you can you can switch it up if you want. <laughs> but, I might. Like, I don't know. Like here's the reason why it is from. What the fuck, AJ? AJ's turning into Colin Quinn now. Next question, please. Continue on, Lucas. He's apparently sucking something. Um, <laughs> no, no. He he he's definitely getting the work in. Feast um, your eyes, Eddie. Feast your eyes. <laughs> uh, AJ, stop getting your work in. Um, what? Uh, moving on. Um, for me, oh. was a personal one for me, and you're gonna see what some of these can be personal ones for me. Um, the reason why it's personal to me is because again, this talks about um, break, um, breaks up, break up, and whatever, or we cannot find that person and rejection, all this type of shit. And for me, when I first listened to it back, so I remember when I first listened to it, I was like, okay, this is a beautiful song. But when I listen to it and what I went through, it hit differently. Especially when he said, I never claimed to be a saint. I never claimed, I know, I think someone with a friend and I'm, I gotta look at that guy. I only wish you weren't my friend, but so, I wish you only were my friend. Again. And um, I just love that song. I think Corey really showed that he had great range of vocals. No yeah. matter no matter when it comes to acoustic, screaming, clear vocals, whatever the case may be for him, he knows how to fucking sing. And I just love this song. It's a beautiful song. So if, if you really are going through something with this, like breakups and shit, this is the song for you. All right, Jason, you're up for number seven. Number seven goes to Disaster Piece. I love it. Well, I don't have a relatable meaning to it, but I do like the meaning because it because it connects to to the audience that has been through a similar situation than than what Corey Taylor has been through. Yeah. And you know what? I I I enjoy songs like that that connects to their audience. Yes, for sure. And and you can still enjoy it even if you don't if you don't relate to it. My number one is going to be a movie like that. Um, AJ, what's your number eight? My number my number seven is Snuff. Because it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, immaculate song. Like, this was when, like, okay, this song was made by, like, obviously the band. But, like, it's like a, it's like a not your normal heavy metal Slipknot song, you know. There are some few things from there, but like, it's nah. just a nice common. It's a nice common song to really listen to from Slipknot, and 
as soon as I listen to the song, I am like, holy shit. I think this is going to go in my top 10. If this song is not on your top 10, you're out of your freaking mind. Because there's oh, no way. Yeah, I guess I'm out of there's, my mind then. Damn. Oh, my oh, not son. you, Batty. Who's in my mind? Not you. That's just the what band, not you. Anyways. Um, yeah, before you done it. But this, but this song is just perfect. I think. In my personal opinion. I wish I could put it in higher, but there were so many fucking songs from them that I love. Like, that's what, what, what Maddie said, like, for number eight, for Left Behind. Yes. And, and check out that video um, of that album, Iowa. When I said something that really can really help people um, with the advice I said, um, I said a good advice. Um, and it's a relatable advice. So, I would take it, to be honest, from me. Anyways, um, stuff is a great song. Let's move on to the next person. All right, Joe again, number eight. I mean, the seven, yeah. my bad. Oh, you, Bro. Want, you want my number seven? You want my number seven? Lucky number seven, dude. <clears throat> eight, seven, six. If you're a five five five, you're a fucking six 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 heretic anthem from Iowa. Do I even need to say anything? Do I really even need to say anything? It's one of the most iconic Slipknot songs of all time. Something that always gets the crowd going. Something everyone can sing along to, and also it just pisses off all the religious people. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's on my list. Uh, I mean, that's why it's on. This is one of the main reasons why it's on my list because I just because I just wanted to do I that. Know, I know why it's on your. <laughs> I know why it's on your list. Yeah, everyone knows why it's on my list, y'all. If y'all known me recently, but but also it's just re- just like instrumentally one of their heaviest songs. Like instrumentally, one of their heaviest songs. Like they go off on this fucking song. They they also they try to make it heavy as possible, but also catchy as well. Like it has a catchy chorus. Like it's something the crowd can channel along to. It's just overall an incredible, incredible song. It is. It really is. And there we go. It coming from again, coming from myself. I think it's a great song. It's going to be awesome. my list. So that again, I'm, I'm one of those um, actually syllabized ones. Um, moving on to Matty. So, uh, Julian. Originally, we did have the same song at the same spot, but that's kind of at an honorable mentions now. Why? You put snuff? No, snuff is snuff is like honorable mention. What is your number seven? Then? My number seven is from a good old movie called Resident Evil, and it is off of Iowa. Let's fucking go! And it is called My Plague. Oh. If you know me. <laughs> You know I love horror movies, and you know that no I love No way, movies. really? Oh, my God. I, um, I never knew that. So, I can't even remember when I watched it. I watched it as a kid, I know that. But hearing the song, I was like, damn, this shit's good. This shit's good as hell. The song is just, it reminds me. So, it, it just fits the fucking movie so well. And the fact that it, like, got Slipknot more recognition... And more plays and all of that was just like incredible, and you they mean, deserve yeah, to be in a lot plagues. of movies. What? Enough plagues, yes. Ignoring you now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I really like the song a lot. Um, it, it just good old early Slipknot, the nostalgia of it, just incredible. And I don't really know what else to say about the song other than it's just absolutely phenomenal. All right. Um, Jillian, uh, we have the same one in this. We have the exact same one. My number seven is a Hedrick album, too. <laughs> you thought that I was not. I know I'm religious, but I am not going to be that hardcore about it. 
I'm one of the solo-vised ones. I listened, to this song. I listened to this song again as of recently of the, of the album, but you can check out the review. And how I describe it, if you think you're so good, then basically I'm evil. That That's, again, how I see it. And I love it. It's basically how I said before. Like, you can be a hero in your story, but I can be a villain in your story too. But no, you can be a villain in their, in their story, but a hero in my story. And I just, it's the most, as Julian said, the most heaviest, not the most heaviest, but one of their heaviest songs that they have done. And I just, again, love that Koi has the guts to say what he's got to say. Again, again, I may come from a different background than Julian and Maddie and all of them, but I can respect, of Koi, with what he's coming from. That's, that's, that's the difference between this side of these hardcore motherfuckers right here and me that I can respect others and not judge. Exactly. But anyways, that is going to be number seven. So moving on to number six. Jason, your number six. AFK. Sorry, I have to turn on my volume for a second. Ooh. All right. Number six. People, people equals shit. BB equals shit? People. Oh. 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 People. Oh. 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 Julian is deaf. What the hell are you just say? I'm just saying I can relate to that. Anyway, so. <laughs> Why? Okay. Um. Because it's good song. Uh, uh, okay, I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's the same reason as the previous song. A great meaning that can connect to the audience, even though I, even though I don't relate to it. Um, AJ never said. It's gone quiet for a second. Okay. All right, number said- six. Number six is wait and bleed. Wait and bleed. Oh, me who has that higher up? Oh my god, dude. Like, as soon as, like, the first, like, it, the intro, like, as soon as they came on, like, I'm not the end of the That's how you sound. Yeah, yeah. Like, but, but, oh, my God. I feel like this one's definitely one of my favorites on the album. Maddie, you were fucking right. This song's great. What am I right about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. No, but like yeah, when you like, sang that, when you sang that song on TikTok, like, oh my god, sure. I was just so blown away, <laughs> and that just made me got into it more. Good. And this song is fucking amazing. I definitely enjoyed it. We gotta review always. that album next year. Yeah. Oh, definitely for sure. Definitely. There's so many good yeah. songs yeah. in there. I'm surprised when you subtitled yet. The fuck. Oh, what y'all think? Yeah. Well, now it's perfect timing because I'm a part of the Mashcast and I can be here for that. Yay. I'm sorry. You, and she can make the, those decisions. <laughs> yeah. And exactly. Lucas is in charge now with Bob because Mike <laughs> left. <laughs> All right, Yay. Joey. I'm here too. <laughs> okay. Okay. Who said that? Me. Yes. I'm here too. Okay. I'm in charge as well. Okay. Shut up. No, no you're not Jace. Jason. Jason is in Jason is in charge, not you, Jace and Bailey. It's it's kind of like In and Out, the burger place. It's Jace and. <laughs> anyway, question number six. In and Out burgers, fuck off. Number six. What did you say? Number six. Yeah, number six. Number six. Uh. <laughs> Uh, undo these chains, my friend. Yeah, Before the rage I've hidden. Devil and I, man, yes. probably, about one, probably one of their big, definitely one of their biggest songs. This is one of the songs I think this is the song that got them number one on the iTunes charts. Like, this was the first song that I think they ever released that got on the iTunes charts. Like, even <laughs> when did wait, when did iTunes become a thing? I don't fucking know. iTunes has been a thing for a long time. Well, yeah, but I don't, think, I don't even think like Psychosocial or like any of All Hope Is Gone got on the charts. But like this song got the number one on the iTunes charts. 
in all all of it. So, but yeah, this song is just absolutely incredible. A tribute to the late great Paul Gray. Fucking miss you, Paul. And this basically signified the the new era of Slipknot because yep. we got this is the first song they released with Jay and V Man. The first song they ever released since the passing of Paul. And this is basically them telling everyone we can get over, we can we can overcome the hardships. And we can get out. Um, and there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And this song signified that they are here to fucking stay. Yep. And that's it. That's okay. all I've got. Okay. I'm gonna make sure I make sure because again, I, I don't know how you enough your sentences. Um sandwiches. Maddie, number six. My number six is off of All Hope is Gone. And it is Dead Memories. I absolutely yeah. love this song so much. Again, the music video was just incredible. Absolutely incredible. I love, you know, Joey with the with his little freaking fingers and the branches and shit. I loved it. Um, but for me, I have a personal connection with this song. Um, after a breakup I had in, uh, what was it, 2020? Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, 20. No, 2021. 2020, yep. 2021. Uh, so last year. Um, I listened, I, I knew the song before and I've always loved the song, but this song I listened to so much last year after my breakup, I really connected with this song even more than before. Um, what the fuck, AJ? <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, it okay. it's just such an incredible song. Um, Corey, again, I think this was when he, he, this album specifically was when he really started to show that he could do more with Slipknot than just screaming. Like, obviously, we know with Stone Sour, he can sing. You know, he sings a lot. He does screaming still in that. But with Slipknot, it was mainly just screaming with a little bit of singing. So I think that when it came to All Hope is Gone, I think they wanted to show, especially Corey wanted to show that he could bring the Stone Sour elements to Slipknot and still have it be Slipknot. And it worked really fucking well for them like yes this may not be my favorite record but it still has a lot of great tracks on it that i love and still listen to to this day dead memories is definitely like my favorite off of that album for sure so that is my number I can, six i can agree all right my number six comes off of volume three okay. it is the blister exists a little deep cut there. And the, only, and the reason why I got up there, I got one part of the song that is number six for me. Joey Jorison's drum solo. That's why it's up there for me. Rest in peace to him, man. Because let me tell you, every single time the drum solo comes on, I just want to do the exact drum solo. Every single time. It's a deep cut to me. It is a deep cut to me to the blister exists. But I just love this song. I like when Corey again is screaming. I just I this is overall just a great song. It's again you have different elements of work. Not just again Corey singing out and you have the guitar behind him, but you show out how talented Joy George is a drummer. He is pretty much to me one of the greatest mellow drummers. One up, not the greatest, but one up. And um, I really think it's a great song for me. And um, I think it's probably the best one I've gone for my personal pick. And uh, with Jason, now I'm going to the top five. So what's your number five? Huh? Okay, so top five. Oh. Number five goes to the blister exists. Man, yeah, no. that's. That is such a, a phenomenal song. Um, it's one of the songs that got me hooked onto Slipknot and maybe a bigger fan of the band. And so, yeah, that's so yeah, that's my number five. All right, Asia, number five. 
Okay, my number five is Psychosocial. Basic this- bitch. <laughs> <laughs> No, but... Oh, wait, no, that means I'm gay. Well, I can still do that. You can, yeah. I can. All right. Okay. One of my fucking favorites of all time. Like, like, I just listened to this song so many fucking times. And I just still love it to this day, man. Great fucking song. I definitely enjoyed it, as always. And I would love to listen to it again. For sure. Um, I'll listen to it. Well, do it now, bitch. <laughs> do it, you won't. After this episode, do it live. Fuck it. I'll do it, do it live. Do it live. I'll do it after the episode. Anyways. Anyways. Um, good song. And let's move on. All right, Julian. Oh, moving on a little me. Um, we're going back to the debut. Pick up the pace! <laughs> sick. All of us are sick. The whole world I think is sick. The whole world I think is sick. Yeah. Wait, Maddie, what are you doing? I'm looking at my tattoo because it has the word sick in it. <sighs> hey, be thankful I didn't start singing sick of me, okay? Sick of this. Fucking bullshit. Anyway, sick is uh. That's why I left. That's why I left. You left because of me. It's like hard time. Well, I left because of a bunch of people. But anyway, um, yeah, sick is such an iconic song. Not because of you, Lucas. Um, sick is such a great song. Um, another great album opener. Like seriously, the way like that intro into sick is just fucking awesome. Just that woman just constantly screaming like the whole world i think is sick the whole world i think is sick it's just such an iconic introduction to an album and the song is just great too like like what else can i even say like seriously it's one of their iconic hits that everyone wants expects them to play so yeah sick it's number five my number five is God, God, got me up and fuck, fuck, fuck me up. Everybody had it so fucking low, and I'm just like, me I didn't have has it in top five. Um, I fucking love this song. I love it so Whoa. fucking much. No way. Shut the hell up. <laughs> um, th- this song has such good, like, fucking great energy to it. Um. I, I really don't know wh- how, like, why I love this song so much other than the energy it gives me, but, like, it's just so fucking good. Like, I'm kind of glad TikTok made it popular because now more people are getting into it and it's getting the recognition that it fucking deserves. Lord, um, yes, I'm all here for it. I don't care. People are getting into it. I'm, like, the complete opposite of what these fucking people are on TikTok. Like, if it gets you into these fucking bands, then fuck yeah. Get into these fucking bands. If Stranger Things got you into Metallica, fuck TikTok, yeah. TikTok can get you into Slipknot. Exactly. Same thing with Iron Maiden because of Eddie. Fuck yeah. Get into Iron Maiden. It yeah. doesn't fucking... And the same thing with Kate Bush. Like, it doesn't fucking matter how long it's been around for. If you like it, fucking get into it. Don't let other people and other elitists fucking tell you otherwise. And to all the elitists out there, go fuck yourselves. Fuck off. <laughs> Literally... Um, like even Metallica doesn't fuck with that gatekeepy shit. So if yeah. Metallica <laughs> doesn't, then don't fucking gatekeep. It yeah. makes you look like a loser. They even said themselves, whether you've been with us for 40 minutes or 40, 40 years, years, we were we welcome everyone. Yeah. So take that. Yeah. I think it's fucking great how people are getting into the music, you know. So quite honestly, I'm really glad that Custer is finally getting the recognition and love that it fucking deserves because it's such a great fucking song. Um, it's it's like one of those songs that you can work out to. Yeah. And like and- have a fucking mosh pit by yourself in your fucking room if you wanted to. Like it makes me want to drop kick an ostrich. <laughs> it's so fucking good. Huh? <laughs> makes me want to it's it's so fucking good. I I love this song so much. That's all I gotta say about Custer. 
I was Matt, gonna, I was going to say something, but after Matty said drop kicking an ostrich, that just made me lose my train of thought. <laughs> Good. So on. All right, Maddie, you read my mind. My number five is Cluster as well. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Let me tell you, I don't care how many times I hear it, but every single time I hear the rift, every single time I hear the chorus, I have to break my neck. I'm going to say simple with that. I have to break my neck. I know Wu-Tang Clan say protect your neck, but I ain't protecting my neck. But um, let me tell you, this song is absolutely incredible. What exactly what I said it was actually I was going to say too. So. I'm not going to say anything else. So let's move on to number four. Jason. Number four has to be Unsainted. I remember hearing the song from from an NXT TakeOver event. And that's that's probably one of the songs I I discovered for Slipknot thanks to thanks that Thanks to that NXT show. And you know what? That has since been one of my favorite songs on this band. And, and it may, made me a bigger fan of Slipknot. And I just like the vibe of that song. It and, and, yeah. and really keeps it going throughout the day. All right. AJ, number four. What? All right. Uh, number four. And when you go to five, 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 to say, say, say. Red Anthem. Oh my god. This song is fucking amazing, man. Like, even with the crowd, like, getting behind it makes it a lot better. It's so good. I love this song. I would listen to it again, to be honest, because it's so good. Anyways, let's move on to the next person. All right, Julian, number four. Uh, we're going to a bonus track, I should say. It's oh. off of point five, the great chapter. It's called Override. Yes. Oh, damn, I put that my way. Yes. I WWE 2K19, man, probably one of the best WWE 2K games we've gotten. Yep, 2K20 is. 2K22 is good. Whoa, almost dropped my phone. Um, 2K22 is good, but like 2K19 was like finally made me fall in love with the wrestling games again, and then 2K20 just ruined that. So, <laughs> yeah, I just remember loading up the menu screen, and I was just like, I was just listening to the music, and all of a sudden I was like, Wait, is this is that Corey? That's Corey. Holy shit, that's Slipknot. And then I just fell in love with the song, and even though it did kind of get annoying after a while, hearing it over and over again. But um, but I'm not gonna deny it. it's such a beautiful song. I really enjoy it, and I still listen to it to this day. So yeah, thank. You. That's one thing I'll thank WWE 2K for. Can we also just talk about the fact that more games are putting metal bands into it? Yeah. Like fucking Fortnite has corn, corn, they corn, play corn <laughs> on the radio stations in the game. I think that's fucking phenomenal. What song? I love it. Uh, I think it's off their newest record, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. that's even better. Oh, shit. I know what you won't be seeing at it. You probably won't be seeing that in any of the other 2K sports games, though. You probably won't see it in MLB or NBA or anything like that. They'll probably no. just and stuff. But with wrestling, you're going to get metal. You're going to get – I mean, oh. they fucking added metalcore. They added fucking uh, poppy. Like- they added fucking poppy. Asking Alexandria. Oh, hold on. They added Bring Me the Horizon. They added Asking Alexandria to the last game. They added mm-hmm. Motorhead. Yeah, they're adding all different kinds now, and it's fucking great. I love it. Um, uh, next my year, turn now? Yeah, get us Wage War next year. Yeah. For 2K23. Get Bear Tooth on there, fuck. Motionless and white, if anything. Please, Jeez. please. Oh, this tide would be perfect. Oh, my God, yeah. I agree. All right, uh, okay. my turn, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, my number four is... Wait and bleed. I listen. If you know me, you know I love this album. It is my probably my favorite album. I said that earlier. It's definitely tied with uh, Iowa, but 
I always go back to this one. Um, I, I'm always singing the song, whether it be to myself on the podcast. Like, I'm always fucking singing the song. I love it. It's great. Um, yeah, I mean, I love the music video, too, with the with all the live uh, with footage the, with, and, and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's all trippy, and oh, I just, I fucking love it. It's so great. Um, I love Paul's mask. The pig mask. That's probably yeah. my favorite one, honestly. It's so good. But yeah, that's my number four is, is Wait and Bleed. All right. My number four comes off All Hope is Gone. It's a little deep cut, and Maddie mentioned it. It is Dead Memories. And number yeah! Four. I love that song. It's my list, Joanne. So you can change it. Um, I didn't say anything. For me, um, this was actually kind of a weird one. Um, so I would comment it a random number. It's like a random number you get something from the playlist. And I get, I commented a random number. I don't know which one I commented. It was 667. And it, it came up with Dead Memories by Slipknot. So I was like, okay, Slipknot? Okay, count me in. This one has great taste. So I listened to this song. And again, I hope this. Uh, uh, all Hope is Gone is not my favorite, but it still has many jams, as Maddie said. Yep. And this is definitely one of them. I, this is probably my favorite, my, not my newest one, that the newest, newest, but definitely new for me. And get into more of a Slipknot that is not like everyone knows, but definitely for me is one of my personal favorites. So, yeah, May said it all for me again because she be- basically memories at this point. So we're going to the top three. I'm going to try to wrap this up quickly because, again, I want to get into the hot tub. Um, Jason. Number three goes through to one of the newer songs, The Chapel Town Rag. Really? That high? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and since this is one of the singles off the upcoming album, The End So Far, or this has got me hyped for it. Really? Right. And yeah, and, and yeah, I think Slipknot's doing a great job in, in hyping this album up, and, and, and I'm excited for it. Is that for me an honorable mention? I personally think that, again, it's going to be honorable mention for me. I don't necessarily think it's going to be my top ten, but again, if that is at least it's better than we're not your guy. Just say. Um AJ, what's your number three? Again, speed it up. All right. My number three is Before I Forget. Man, this song is a fucking classic. Like it's just a fucking good song. Like, as soon as the chorus comes in, ooh, it just blew me away. Like, I, I, I knew this song was going to be great. And it was, man. Um, I would definitely listen to this song. I would listen to this song again, man. Definitely, for sure. Um, I recommend listening to this song as well for you or viewers at home. Um, yeah, man. This shit is awesome. You done? Yeah. That's what I thought. Um, Damn. Huh? Top three. Oh, sorry. Um, he wasn't paying attention. Um, so, number three for me is uh, <clears throat> Nero Forte. Oh, Such a good fucking chorus, man. I'm just putting it out there because of the fucking chorus. Such a fucking awesome chorus. That's all I got to say. All right, Maddie, number three. My number three, I'm just going to hold this up and you'll know. The music video is based off of. Oh, God damn it. I know it. The Shining. Uh, It is none other than. Spit it out. Spit it out. It is the first music video I had ever seen. It was not the first song I heard, but it was the first music video I saw. And it's really what made me fall in love with the band because I've always been a fan of horror ever since I was a kid. We've talked about that a lot. 
and it's it's just so 90s and i love 90s music it's probably some of my favorite music and it's just so nostalgic i love it so much all right my number three comes off the subtitled and it is was mentioned before number three for me is wait and bleed oh yeah so again people say why is it that high it's my list first of all and um i just i just love the song i just love the song it's just like yeah a little soft chorus singing here and then just dies face first into the song and i just fucking love it to joy joris is drumming and to Corey Terry just screaming his lungs out like absolutely incredible song absolutely incredible song all right so now we're almost in, into number one so we're going to number two number eight dos jason take it away i'll take it away with the dying song that the recent single what? Really? Since those instrumentals blew me away when I first heard the song for the first time. Those instrumentals proved that Slipknot still has it to this day. And, 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 I, and I love to see it. It's like Beartooth. When did, when did they lose it? Never. Um, the last album. And here's why. <laughs> because they are built different. Oh my god. I'm not so, you know, so you know the, the the dying song on fits that spot for me because of the of the instrumentals, the the, the guitars blew me away. All right, AJ, speed up. What's number two? Me number two is duality. Duality, man. My poor ears. This song is, <sighs> duality is a fun, It's a fantastic song, man. If you don't like this song, then shame on you. Because this song is amazing, man. Song fucking amazing. It's hot, Julian. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, Julian? Me after the after fucking piggyback and Stranger Things. God. Episode of the season. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna tell me I'm wrong that that's not I'm how my face talk, was. But this is not what we're talking about. This is me. That's what we're always talking about. Okay, just fucking go. That was me after what happened to Eddie. What? <laughs> Never mind. Go on. Move it's on. Not on. AJ. All right, everyone shut the fuck up and go. Please. Julian, it's your turn. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> Come here. Oh my oh. god. AJ, you go. Oh, you... I already went. He went. Oh. I said it's your turn, Julian. Oh my god. I didn't know. <sighs> it was a snuff. He's number two. Are you going to talk about it? I don't know. Should I? Um, yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. That was like the first taste of like what Slipknot like i don't know like it like because they've done acoustic stuff before but no, this is so. didn't they do one on volume three i thought i thought was that it wasn't one? like a lot but it this was like different okay but this is like the first like real like soft slip that's yeah that's what i mean like they did some stuff but which was the, the good majority of all hope is gone well most of all hope is gone was very heavy but there was like a couple soft parts in there mm -hmm. Um, and it just shows that, like, people are like, oh, Slipknot's always doing heavy shit. Like, why can't they do anything else? Like, this proves that they can expand their horizons. They can do different stuff. And mm -hmm. also, I love it even more because they've been doing it a lot live recently. They've been adding it to their set list a lot. Yep. So. You're a snuff, aren't you? Yep, and I got to, I'm going to get to see them two times this year. So hopefully I get to hear that song a lot. You lucky. Mm. Thank you, Fethers. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'll see. Mad day. Mad day. My number two is probably one that most people wouldn't know, but my number two is Vermilion. Bum, bum, it's boy. personally my favorite track off of Volume Three. Um, everything about it is incredible. I loved the music video to it. 
um, Corey's vocals on that song, compared to any of the other songs off that record, this is the one that really fucking drove it home for me. It's just phenomenal. Absolutely beautiful. I loved his vocals on it. My number two. Here we go. My number two is Eyeless. Oh, 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 yes. You probably my number one. That's not my number one. You think you know me. Um, so the reason why it's number two for me, I personally think it's one of the best tracks of the self-titled, in my personal opinion. And I just love him screaming the chorus again. It's just another great heavy song. It, everyone pretty much knows it and it's a classic. Absolute classic. So now we're gonna get into our number ones now, and I'm I'm excited to see what all of them are. I got a feeling what Maddie's gonna be. But um everyone knows what mine is. Everyone knows what mine is. So Jason, what is your number one? Duality. New. Duality, I think it's one of the best work Slipknot has done. And, and yeah, it, and it really it really it really has great energy into this and and that's what I like. And, 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 and it's heavy as fuck. All right, Bruno Mars. Um, AJ, you're muted. And um, what's your number one? Bill. My number one is people <laughs> equal shit. Oh my god. Makes this sense. song. This song is one of my favorite songs from Slipknot of all time. If this is not number one, oh my god, I would have, I would lose well, my stuff by now. Bad. Do you sound like an elitist? <laughs> but anyway, this song is fucking amazing. I would listen to it again. I recommend it. And that was my top ten list. Go ahead, next person. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, AJ, I'm gonna sign this right now. I'm gonna sound bold as hell. You sound like a fucking elitist. Uh, mm. Moving on. Moving on. Yeah, and we hate him, so don't be surprised you get kicked out again. Wow. Uh, so moving on to Julian, what's your number one? God damn you, Jason. <laughs> Man, kicked out of the podcast, bitch. It's no, 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 Lucas, don't kick him out. Seriously. Um, my number one is uh, I push my fingers into my eyes. It's the only thing. Yeah, duality. <laughs> Damn it, I can't move my chair back. I'm moving my table instead. You can do it. You just gotta believe. Oh. Ha, 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 ha. Fuck off. See, you did it. No. You just had to believe in yourself. Okay. Me too, Julia. Duality is my number one pick. It's one of their most iconic songs. One of their most popular songs. Everyone fucking knows it. Um, I'm surprised no one put Psychosocial on, on theirs, which is weird. AJ did. I did. I oh did. yeah, because he's basic. Um, but yeah, but duality I'm not is basic. um <laughs> with my skin. The one thing with my skin open. The mirror is telling me that I'll never win. <laughs> Duality's number one. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Someone I'm gonna go next. Well, My number one. Is of course everyone fucking knows it. It's Eyeless. It was the first song I heard by Slipknot. I love it I so not. much. Um, between Slipknot and Linkin Park, those were like the two bands from early 2000s, 90s that I like got into. Um, and this will always be my number one. It will never change. So, all right, my number one. It's the beginning of Isla, and also AJ was that was also AJ's number one as well. My number one is also people equal shit as well, and this is yes. not again like heaviness for me, but a more deeper meaning for me because it talks about bullying. If you know me, I talk about it before time and time again. I've dealt with it many, 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 many times. And I'm not even afraid to say that it helped me get me where I am today. So, so 
that's all I got to say about that. But just overall, that song is incredible. I just love the screaming that he just did at, at the 30-second mark. Just, one more time, motherfucker. I just love that. And also, just him just... You, you find him not get heavier in the beginning, but it just gets heavier when it keeps on going. That's what I love about the song as well. I scream to this song every single time. So, that's why it's in the ball. So... That's all this. So let's get into the outros. I'm gonna go and go first because I don't want to jump in the hot tub. So, um, so thank you guys for watching this episode of the Moshcast. Where we did our top ten Slipknot songs, and again, it's a new different set for me. Again, I'm with family as well. I'm on vacation, so again, it's gonna be a great time. And I see your hand. <laughs> um, but um, <laughs> my cousin's here right now behind me. Disturbing me. I saw you. You're not. You're not that short. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, again. But definitely check out again our a recent one with Bear Tooth. Um, also, again, a recent ones coming up with um, Death for Dishonor, for Crash and Burn, Zip Analysis, Sip Break Camp is coming up. And um, Moshcast, I don't know, know what the fuck's going on. So, yeah. Uh, so let's go to Jason. Okay, while I'm watching Ring of Honor for the first time, um, I'll say this. Thank you for watching this episode of the Moshcast. We shared our top 10 Slipknot songs. Our next episode, we will be featuring a return, our friend Emilio. Yeah! So, yeah! Yeah, we're all excited. And he had this album request for a while, Theater Dark by Iron Maiden, so we should be getting yes. that done. Yes, I just got the pop for a minute. I feel like I have to be I on that episode. Of course. So, um, so um, anyways, that's our next episode, and yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and enjoy Ring of Honor. Death before Dishonor. Yeah, just don't die. Um, don't yeah, I won't. Again. I got this. All right. Uh, what's that you just got? Uh, Julian, I know you've been waiting patiently. Go ahead and get your outro out of the way, dude. What? What? Oh. Get your outro. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching this lovely podcast, the Moshcast, last podcast and all the music. Um, please go watch my IGTV stuff. I'm returning to IGTV very soon. Next week, we'll be fucking do. Um, Albums I Miss series is coming back. I'm going to more concerts, going to more festivals, hanging out with my metal buddies in person. Yay. And uh, yeah, well, uh, see you guys next time. I'm, uh, I actually got to go because I got family here right now. So goodbye. All right. All right you have a good night. Bye, Love you. All right. Damn. Damn. Come on, he left us. <laughs> AJ, you up next. All right, that's one of the episode of the loudest podcast of all my ear. The Mosh fucking cast, where we did our top ten Slipknot songs. Um, yes, the next album will be Fear of the Dark by Iron Maiden. I just recently got the pop for that album, so I really enjoy that. I get the Eddie one actually. I actually want to show you right now on display. <laughs> Um, give me one sec. You say oh, Eddie? Wait. Eddie? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Eddie? I'm a, oh, wait. I'm Eddie? a fucking, I'm a fucking idiot. Uh, Eddie? I don't, even, I don't even have it. I'm an idiot. Um, okay, just forget about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm the one with the Eddie pop. Thank you. No, but I, I, there was like an album pop, but I don't think I have to fear of a dark version, which yes, sucks. My God. Anyways, um, there you guys, um, I also go follow all the members of the podcast on their social media, Twitter, Instagram, etc. Et et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, my favorite platform. And also go follow all the podcasts on Instagram, Twitter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Also go follow our TikTok page at um, Crash underscore Mosh underscore Analysis. And also go start to subscribe all to the YouTube channels. Crash Bird, this podcast, and Cinematic Analysis. And thank you guys for watching, and I'm out. Rock on, motherfuckers. All right, Matt, know what to do. All right. What the fuck is up, Kyle and Richards and whatever the fuck? Uh, 
Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of the Moshcast where we did a top 10 Slipknot songs. Okay. Our next top 10 will be for Spirit Box in October. We may do one before that. I'm not entirely sure. But without further ado, I did announce earlier in this episode that uh, we had a very special episode coming out. And it is for most of our beloved Mr. Eddie Munson. Our husband. What we are going to do, my mom actually came up with this, and I thought it was a pretty cool idea. Uh, So what we're going to do is, if you don't know, Eddie Munson is from Stranger Things. He is the metalhead of Stranger Things that everybody loves, and if you don't love him, get the fuck out. Uh, (laughs) Uh, Okay, bye-bye. I'm out. Bye. (laughs) I'm kidding. So... Again, he's a big metal head. Um, and what we're going to do is we're basically going to have bands from 1983, 1984, 1985. And we're excluding 1986 because we already know what bands he likes. We know he likes Metallica. We know he likes Iron Maiden and Megadeth and whatever. Ow. But then we are also going to be looking at bands from current day. So, like, stuff from our time um, to see what he would like, see if we all agree, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah, it'll be a fun episode. It may just be a couple of us. I know me, Lucas, and Julian will definitely be there for that because we all love Stranger Things and we love Eddie Munson so much. I mean, hello. (laughs) I'm literally wearing the shirt. I have a guitar pick necklace. I like, I have so, like, I have so much. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for that. Uh, be sure to check to check out our other podcast as well, Crash and Burn Cinematic Analysis. Um, and be sure to follow everyone. Their links will be in the description below. TikTok and Instagram at Bill Tooth. And I'm fucking out of here, man. All right. So that's Maddie. That's Jason. That's AJ. That's me. That was Julian. That's not going to come back for a couple months. But we will see you for Iron Maiden. Fear the dark. So rock on and always remember, don't be an elitist. All right. Monster!